Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Earlier this morning, NASA's InSight mission launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base to the planet Mars, the very first interplanetary mission to launch from Vandenberg, because the Atlas V had extra performance, and so it didn't need to launch from Cape Canaveral, which is a much busier place to launch from these days. InSight's design is derived from the older Phoenix lander launched about 11 years ago on an older Delta rocket. Now, those older Delta rockets didn't have nearly as much performance as a modern Atlas V or even modern Delta rockets, and so as a result, the Atlas V was actually overpowered for the job, and that's why it was able to launch from Vandenberg. Now, because it launched from Vandenberg, there was no way I was going to be able to attend the launch, but I was able to see InSight using itelescope.net. I was able to rent time on a telescope in Siding Spring, Australia to take these pictures of InSight as it departed Earth several hours after launch. The faint streak running through the center of the images is the InSight lander. The brighter streak above it is the Centaur upper stage that delivered InSight to its trajectory towards Mars. If you look closely, you can see that the bright streak above InSight actually has some variations in its brightness, and so at times it will appear thicker or thinner as it dims and brightens. This indicates that the Centaur upper stage is either rotating or tumbling when these pictures were taken. Now, this rotation is quite normal according to what I've seen in previous missions with Centaur upper stages. But what I caught this time that I hadn't caught before was what appears to be a fuel dump from the Centaur upper stage and some residual gas hovering around the InSight lander, which can be seen as a faint cloud traveling with it. But it's hard to see that in these images due to all the stray light from the moon and additional light from the stars around it. So what I did is a median stack of the frames and subtracted that median stack from each individual frame to bring out that which was moving in the images, the InSight lander and the Centaur upper stage. So here's the result of that stack in the first five frames where that outgassing occurred from the Centaur upper stage in the second frame. You can see the cloud even move away from it by the third frame. And you can see a cloud moving with the InSight lander consistently down below. Now I believe this cloud might be residual gas from thruster firings by InSight, but it could also be residual gas from the separation of the spacecraft from the Centaur upper stage, or possibly uh, residual gas from a separation maneuver between the Centaur and InSight or possibly even a cloud of some debris from the separation itself. Of course, this is all speculation based on my own analysis of these images, but I would welcome any input from anyone who actually works on the InSight team. JPL's Horizon system predicts coordinates for InSight that are much closer to the faint streak than the brighter streak, which suggests that that is indeed InSight, whereas the brighter streak would be the Centaur upper stage. This also makes sense because Centaur is of course much larger than InSight, and so it makes sense that it would be reflecting more light and produce a brighter streak in the images. What I did next was astrometrically solve each of the images and measure the position of InSight in those images to calculate the orbit and confirm that it is indeed headed for Mars. Now here are the results of my astrometric measurements and the resulting orbit calculations from those measurements. And the takeaway message here is that based on the Earth minimum orbit intersect distance, you can see it definitely did come from Earth, and based on the distance next to that, MA, it's headed to Mars orbit. Now we can take this orbit and load it into Celestia and see where this object is really headed. Will it intersect Mars? So you can see that InSight, denoted by the red crosshair, travels from Earth to Mars in about six and a half months, just as NASA said. So in late November of this year, it will hopefully land safely on Mars and begin studying the seismology and internal structure of the red planet. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.